G'day, it's Pete here and I'm back for another featured lesson. Now today I wanted to talk about cubiting towards slam. So there's a lot towards cubiting and I just want to start off by saying I like cubiting first and second round controls. So we're talking about showing first and second round control bits. Some people just do first round controls but over today's video I want to try and show you why I think first and seconds are actually better. And to do that, I want to start off talking about slam bidding philosophy or like what approaches I like to do to actually get our way towards slam. And then also talk about cue bidding uh, versus something that's often it's confused with long suit trials or help suit trials. And then we'll talk about how to set up a forcing auction where you can uh, progress into cue bidding. So let's first have a look at our slam bidding philosophy. So. To, to bid towards slam, there's a few steps that you need to do. Now, most people, when they think of slam, think, okay, Roman keycard, let's go. Um, or Blackwood, let's bid slam. But that should be your final step. Or maybe you don't even use it some of the time. But that should be the final step towards bidding slam. And there's lots of things you want to do beforehand. And the first thing you want to do is set up a forcing auction. Tell your partner that you need more information. Another thing you need to make sure you do is tell them what the trump suit is. You might know, you might know what uh, the trump suit's going to be, but your partner doesn't necessarily know yet. So we want to set up a forcing auction and tell them what's going to be the trumps. Confirm the trump suit. Then what we do is we progress into first or second round controls, and then once we do that, we can then move into slam, uh, Roman keycard, and then slam. So why first or second round controls? Well, if we're interested in slam, there's two hurdles that we need to get past. Like, if we're in the slam zone, one thing we want to do is make sure we're not missing two aces. And this is what Roman key cards is for. It solves, do we have enough aces or do we have enough key cards to actually want to bid slam? But there's another hurdle, which is we have to make sure we don't lose two tricks in any one suit. It's really disappointing when the opponents just go ace king of one suit and that's it. And we don't, uh, and we just lose those first two tricks. Now, if you just do first round controls, that doesn't solve the problem of do we have second round control? And by second round control, I mean ace, king, singleton, or void. So void and aces, they're first round. Singletons and kings, they're second round controls. So that's what we want to try and discover with first or second round controls. So there's those two hurdles. Roman keycard solves, do we have enough aces? First or second round controls are there to work out, are we not going to lose two tricks in any one suit? So let's look at uh, one common misconception, which is long suit trials versus cue bidding when they apply. After we talk about when they apply, I'll talk about how they actually work or at least how cue bidding works. So let's just bring up a, a bidding pad. And let's say that the auction goes one heart by us and it goes three hearts. In this auction, we know we're playing in hearts. So if we bid any new suit, we still wanna go back to hearts. So what does bidding a new suit such as three spades, four clubs, four diamonds actually show? Well, these should be qubits showing first or second round control in the suit. But one thing that they often get confused with is help suit trials or long suit trials where it goes one heart, two hearts. And if you bid two spades, uh, not there, um, but if we bid two spades, this should be a long suit trial or a help suit trial or a game trial of some description. Again, we know we want to play in hearts, so we're always going back to hearts. The difference is, what is our target? So if we look at this auction where it's gone one heart past two hearts, we're still trying to work out, do we want to play a part score or do we want to play game? So two spades should be focused around trying to work out, do we want to get to a game contract or do we want to stop in a part score? So the first hurdle here is working out, do we want to go to game or a part score? Whereas if we look at the previous auction, when it goes three hearts and we bid three spades, we can no longer stop in a part score, can we? We're forced to be going to a game contract as soon as we bid over three hearts. 
So the choice here is no longer do we want to go to part score or game because we're definitely playing game in hearts at least. So the question now is do we want to go to the next level? Do we want to go to slam? So this is why three spades is a first or second round control and two spades in the previous auction was a game try of some description. The barrier to work out when cubids uh, apply is once you're past three of your major. If you're past three of your major, then you can no longer uh, stop below in three major or below, so you're playing for uh, cubids at that stage. Again, if you've got a minor suit fit, if you're past three no trumps, um, or past four of your minor, um, usually past three no trumps, then again you will be cubiting, because you can't really stop in a part score very often. Um, because one thing I want to describe is I like four minor to be forcing. If you have an uncontested auction, four minor should be natural and forcing, and just encouraging a Q bidding auction. Because when we have a minor suit fit, the most likely game that we're going to play is three no trumps. So if we're already at the four level, that likely game is no longer there, so we're now deciding between five minor and six minor. There is one exception to that rule, and that is if the, it's a competitive auction and we're bidding over the opponents, so the opponents are at like three of a major, and we're trying to bid to uh, four minor. Anyway, so Q-bidding uh, works when we're past three of our major. This is probably the most common spot, and it's when we can no longer stop in a part score. So we're definitely going to game, if we start bidding a new suit, it's saying, do we want to go to slam? All of these new suit bids are aiming at where's the minimum level that we're forced to and trying to work out, can we go to that next level? That's what they're really trying to solve. So this three spade bid, this would be a Q bid. Whereas if we backtrack and we look at two hearts, past two spades, this is a game try bid uh, because we can still stop in three hearts. We haven't uh, forced our way to be bidding um, towards slam yet because our first decision is do we want to go to game or not. So here, this would be a game try, whereas the three spade bid was a slam try showing first or second round control. All right, so before we move on, I wanted to talk about some forcing auctions where we can set up a force and start a Q bidding auction. Because I think this is really important and a lot of people don't know how to set up a game forcing auction. So let's look at various different situations. So the first one is our partner opens one no trump. And let's say we've got a four card spade suit. So we, we stay in and our partner bids two spades. What do we do now if we're interested in slam? Some people just think, okay, I have to jump to four no trumps, but that consumes a lot of space. We want to slow the auction down and say, partner, where do you, like, I'm interested in slam, I need more information. And start, firstly, set up a forcing auction, tell partner what trumps is, move into Q bidding, then key card. This is the approach that we want to try and use on as many hands. It won't work on all hands, but if you can adopt this process, you'll find your slam bidding a lot better. So here, what you can actually do is bid the other major at the three level. So when partner responds to spades, if you bid three hearts, this should set spades and say you're interested in slam. And this is just from a deduction of what hands use stamen. And your partner here has already denied hearts, so you've no chance of a heart fit. In the other case where partner bids two hearts, they haven't denied spades, but you have other ways of showing a game going with spades. So if you bid the other major at the three level, this just says, partner, I want to set the trump suit of spades or set the trump suit of the major you've responded. And I'm interested in slam, please start cubing. So this bid uh, occupies two of the spots that, uh, which is set up a forcing auction and tell partners what trumps is. It does both of these in the same bid. This is not like, most people don't actually know this, but this is a fantastic tool. And when you want to think about bidding slam, look at discussing with your partner, how do we set up these forcing auctions? So this is a common one that's actually missed. So that's why I wanted to start with that. Another one that we want to look at is what sort of major suit raises do you play? So when you open one of a major, how do you support your partner and have a forcing auction? You might play Jacoby two no trumps. You might do other bids. Um, so three no trumps might be uh, game forcing with a heart fit, 13 to 15 points. 
You, there's various ways you can do this, but here this sets up a forcing auction. Three no trump won't be passed um, unless it's strictly four triple three. Depends on what your raises are, really. I don't want to get into too much detail, but you have some sort of major raises that say I have a game going hand and I have a fit for you. So that's another way that you can actually do it. Another time that this comes up is when you open two clubs. This sets up a forcing auction. So two clubs, game forcing. You might have an auction go like this. And now we get into the process of bidding three spades, telling partner what trumps is. We've set up a forcing auction with two clubs, and then we uh, tell them what trumps is. So this is the process we want to go through when we're trying to bid slams. So two clubs sets it up straight away. And just one more that I wanted to highlight is in competitive situations. Um, so just got a question, please repeat second round control is a king and so when we're talking about controls, first round controls are aces and voids, second round controls are singletons and kings. So by the, when we mean controls, we mean we stop the opponents easily being able to take fir the first two tricks in the suit. So uh, ace, king, singleton, or void, these are first and second round controls. So aces and voids are first round, kings and singletons are second round controls. So just looking at a competitive situation, so let's say uh, the auction goes one heart and the opponents bid two spades, we can do a Q raise. So bidding three spades here, it's not a first or second round control, but this is, uh, the, the name of this, the, the jargon used in bridge is pretty confusing, but this is a Q raise, not to be confused with Q bidding, but this just says, yes, I have a fit for hearts and I've got a game forcing hand. Um, because we can't stop in three hearts anymore. So this would set up a forcing auction, tell partner what trumps is, and then this allows us to actually get into Q bidding. So let's now jump, like there's some forcing auctions. There's lots of other ways that you can set up forcing auctions, discuss with your partner, how can we tell you what trumps is, and then proceed into a, um, like how do we set up a forcing auction? Then I want to tell you what trumps is, then move into Q bidding and then Roman key card. This is the process you want to go through on as many hands as possible. Discuss different situations where it can come up and how you can actually do this. So then how does cue bidding actually work? So for this, let's just uh, have a very simple auction. One heart pass, I was gonna say pass three hearts. And it doesn't really matter what three hearts is. We'll say this is some sort of raise invitational or better. It doesn't matter what you play it as, but we'll have this as just, we have a heart fit. Now this isn't forcing, but the other player can make a forcing bid. If you bid a new suit here, this is forcing because you obviously have to go back to hearts. So in this one, we've said what trumps is and then switched it into making a forcing bid. So number one and two can be switched around a bit. So what is a Q bid? So a Q bid is past three of your majors. So here, when you've gone beyond three of your major, then we're in Q bidding territory where we show first or second round controls in the suit. So this would say, I have first or second round control in spades. Okay? And it requests that partner show you their lowest first or second round control. So if you then bid four clubs, this would say I have first or second round control in clubs. Now it doesn't matter if you've got the ace of diamonds, and the king of clubs, you always bid the cheaper one first. You don't give preference to bidding your aces first. We want to just bid the cheapest one up the line because we're just trying to convey to partner that we have control of the suit. And this is because it's really important when partner bypasses a suit to highlight that they don't have it. So if we instead bid four diamonds, this would say I have ace or king or first or second round control of diamonds but also it would deny having it in clubs. And this is very important. Any suit you bypass, it denies having first or second round control in that suit. So it doesn't just highlight that you've got first or second round control in diamonds, but denies the fact that you have first or second round control in clubs. So if you were the player who bid three spades, if you had just little clubs, you would know that we're off the ace king of clubs and you could sign off. And it doesn't matter how strong your hand is, if you don't have control of clubs, your partner has warned you that they don't have it, and if you don't have it, you want to stop. 
So it's really important to see what suits have they actually denied. So let's backtrack and look at the first one. Let's say instead of bidding three spades, this player bids four clubs. This would show first or second round control in clubs, but deny having it in spades because three spades was cheaper than four clubs. So we've bypassed three spades. So we're showing first or second round control in clubs and we're denied, denying it in spades. So it doesn't matter how good the three heart bid is. If they don't have anything in spades, they just want to sign off in game. And this is how you can just stop at a low level because you've found a suit that you don't have the ace king in and the opponents can take two tricks straight away. So first or second round controls are really useful for highlighting where you have controls, but also more importantly, when you bypass a suit, you're saying you don't have control of that, please help me here. I want you to show me, do you have control of this suit? So if by bidding four clubs, you're saying I have first or second round control of clubs, but I do not have it in spades. I'm interested in slam and I need you to have control of spades for us to progress towards slam. Okay. This is a very key point. It's not just the suits that you bid, but more importantly, the suits that you bypass, which say I need help in this suit. Please have control of this suit if we want to progress further towards slam, because if we don't, we're off the ace king. Now this is mainly how Q bidding works. If you bid it, if you bypass a suit, you're asking for help in it. If you bid it, it requests your partner Q continue Q bidding. So if you bid at the lowest level, three spades in this instance, um, this would say I have first or second round control. And it requests that your partner now cooperate and Q bid back with you. But as soon as you know that you're off an ace king in a suit, you just stop the bidding. You, you stop straight away. Now, does does a Q bidding auction force you to continue Q bidding? No. So if this hand who bid three hearts really dislikes their hand for whatever raise they've made, if they don't think they've got any good hand whatsoever, they can just sign off in four hearts straight away. Um, but usually when your partner Q bids, if you have just a normal hand, then you cooperate, cooperate by Q bidding. Now, if you're just minimum three hearts, that doesn't mean your hand's bad for slam. I'm talking about if your hand is just pure queens and jacks, maybe an odd king, you've got no key cards. If you want to warn your partner to stop towards slam, you can sign off straight away. But usually when your partner Q-bids, you want to cooperate by Q-bidding. So you can then just show them where you have first or second round control. So here you might have the option to go three hearts, three spades, four diamonds saying I've got first or second round control in diamonds, but not in clubs. So quick recap of how Q bidding actually works. It's after we've found a trump fit, it's beyond three of our major or at the four level if we have a minor suit fit. And we show first or second round controls in the suits that we have and a request partner Q bid back to us. If they instead bid um, you always want to watch which suits they actually bypass because if you bypass a suit you're highlighting you don't have help for it. So let's look at some example auctions. Okay, so we'll bring up a new hand. So this one we have 18 high card points and a five card heart suit. So let's say we open one heart and partner might bid three no trumps which says 13 to 15 points with a heart fit for instance. So here we're now interested in slam, but we don't have uh, control of diamonds. We have control of clubs, but not diamonds. So what we can do is we can bid four clubs. And now notice that the, we haven't bypassed spades in this instance. Um, we can't bid three spades. This is the cheapest Q bid that we actually have in this instance. So this says I have first or second round control in clubs. Now, if partner bids four hearts here, they probably don't have control of diamonds. So we would just know that we're off the ace king of diamonds and we can stop without getting to the five level. If instead partner bid four diamonds, now we know they've got first or second round control in diamonds. We know we've got spades, clubs and diamonds all covered and we can happily move into Roman key card and find out that partner's got two and then we can bid uh, six hearts. Okay. And bit of slam like this. So here, slam, it's 50, well, it's not a great slam. Um, it's pretty pushy, you need hearts to break somewhat. 
uh, your club can go and then you sort of need clubs to break or you need the king of diamonds on site so it's it's an okay slam but this is how it can work after the three no trump bid which set up a forcing auction at least forcing to gain and told partner what the trump suit was we then progressed into q bidding okay another one so let's say here what we have is we've got 14 21 22 23 points and we've got a 2 4 5 2 so what we can actually do is we can open two clubs i would treat this hand as balanced and then i just like waiting bids so we'll bid two diamonds and we bid two no trumps showing 23 to 24 balanced if our partner bids three clubs stamen and uh, we can bid three hearts now if they want to set hearts and slam try just like over one no trump what they can do is bid the other major if we bid three spades they would have to bid four hearts if we bid three hearts though they can bid three spades this says i have have a heart fit and i'm interested in slam please start q bidding if they didn't have a heart fit they would typically just bid three no trumps anyway uh, after this we can start q bidding and we can bid four clubs and our partner can bid four spades because they're interested in slam and this says i have first or second round control of spades but i don't have it in diamonds and now our hand is fantastic here so then we migrate into roman key card and our partner says they've got one we say do you have the queen they say no and we bid six anyway okay so let's have a recap of this option what have we done here Step one, we set up a forcing auction because our hand was so strong that we opened two clubs. Afterwards, we showed our balanced hand and our partner statement and said three hearts. They then told us what the trump suit was while, um, like, we've set up a forcing auction, then they've told us what the trump suit is with three spades. We then progressed into cubiting, and our partner said they've got first or second round control of spades, but not in diamonds, and that's pretty clear we've got ace king of diamonds so here we know that they don't have control of diamonds but we've got it so we can then migrate into roman key card and there so if we go back to our philosophy we set up a forcing auction we told partner what trumps is migrated into q bidding and then we bid slam after roman key card all right uh so this hand it goes one club and we can bid one spade and actually yeah uh so here let, let's backtrack misread partner's hand they open one no trump and here we've got this hand and what we can do is we can transfer to spades so we can bid two hearts partner bids two spades now we know we have a spade fit and we're interested in slam because our hand's awesome so we've got a couple of options here. Um, the first thing we could do is we could uh, try and tell partner we have a fit and that we can either bid a new suit of three diamonds or we could just splinter in hearts. So if you bid four hearts here, I would play that as a splinter, but you'd need to have that as an agreement. This doesn't leave room for Q bidding, but splinters are quite effective. Um, partner would then bid four, sp four spades. After this, we get to find out, um, like, our hand's so good that we're going to be m moving towards slam anyway. Um, but we've managed to transfer, and then we told partner what Trump's is, and we made a forcing bid at the same time. Partner signed off because they don't like their hand here. Um, we would still migrate into slam with Roman keycard and so forth. All right. Another option. So here we have um, 13 high card points, so we'll open one diamond. And our partner bids one heart, and we get to bid one spade. So here, partner will bid two clubs, fourth suit forcing. So if we've shown a unbalanced hand already, which I like to do with the one spade bid, then what we can say is, yes, we do have a stopper. We can bid two no trumps. Now what partner can do is bid three diamonds, which says... I have a fit for diamonds so here what's happened is we've gone through fourth suit forcing which is set up a forcing auction and now they've told us what the trump suit is if we want to do it so we've now learnt that um, we've got 
a trump suit of diamonds and we've got a forcing hand so we can then we haven't chosen to go towards slam yet so we still might want to choose do we want to play three no trumps or do we want to uh, progress towards slam now a hand okay i wouldn't want to commit either way but we could bid something like three spades this is sort of just saying i've got good spades it doesn't necessarily be first or second round control because we're still angling towards three no trumps because we have a minor suit fit and we're trying to work out do we want to play three no trumps if our partner now bids four clubs this is a first or second round control we are past three no trumps and now we're in the slam territory and we can progress from there um, so four clubs here would be first or second round control this is the process that we'd go through notice we've done a game for we've set up a forcing auction we've told partner what trumps is with three diamonds and now progressed into a q bidding auction over this, we could do two things. We could either bid four diamonds, which is still encouraging and leaving it up to partner, or we could cue bid. Uh, you, one thing about cue bidding is you don't always want to cue bid singletons in your partner's suit um, if it's not clear, because sometimes they think that it will be the king and they might have to judge what they've got. Here, it's pretty obvious that we've got a singleton if we've highlighted that uh, we're an unbalanced hand by one spade. So we could cube in four hearts here, but there's no real need to because partner already expects that. Four diamonds is just sort of a waiting bid that you can uh, do. And then it could go uh, four hearts and we can cube in four spades. And now partner can move into Roman key card and find out what we've got. Okay, uh, this time we have a really strong hand. We'll start with two clubs. Sorry, when it gets round to us, two clubs, and it goes two diamonds from our partner, and we bid two spades. So here we've set up a game forcing auction with two clubs, and now we've mentioned that we like spades, but we haven't agreed the spade suit yet. But here, if partner bids three spades, this is saying, yes, I'm interested in slam, or at least I'm happy to cooperate, and I, we've got a spade fit. Now we can progress into cube bidding. So what I can do is cube bid four diamonds, and this says, partner, I have first or second round control in diamonds, but I don't in clubs. So if partner didn't have anything in clubs, they could just sign off in four spades, and we'd know to stop the slam auction straight away. But instead, if they bid something else, um, if they bid four no trumps, then they're saying they've got control of the club suit. They won't know about the heart suit here, but because I'm showing such a strong hand and highlighted I've got a weakness in clubs, if they've got that covered, they can happily move on into Roman key card. And here we've got four key cards. So five clubs, and then they can bid five diamonds. Do you have the queen? And we can say yes, and we have the king of hearts. And they don't have much more, so they can just bid six spades. But if you look at this, get a diamond lead, then we've got uh, 12 tricks. We've got five heart tricks. We've got uh, five spade tricks and our two aces. So we can make uh, 12 tricks nice easily. But if our partner didn't have the ace of clubs, but had say king queen of diamonds, we would know to stop at the four level. So Q bidding is really, really good at trying to solve these issues. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, but a quick recap of what we talked about today. Firstly, the slam bidding style or philosophy that I like. Set up a force, tell partner what trumps is, move into Q bidding, then Roman key card. We then also covered the difference between Q bidding and long suit trials. Long suit trials are when you can still stop in a part score, but Q bidding is when you're past that and uh, you can no longer stop in a part score. So now your choice is do we go to game or are we interested in slam? Then I talked a bit about forcing auctions, some different auctions where you can set up forcing options such as after one no trump and a statement bid, what your major suit raises are, after a two club game force, and also in competitive spots where you can use Q raises. And then we talked about how cue bidding works, where you show first or second round control, where control is ace, king, singleton, or void. And it's not just the suit that you bid, but also the suits that you bypass 
that really highlight uh, where you where you need your partner to have control. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this featured lesson on cubiting, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.